I think one of the great things to come out of the COVID-19 crisis is really how businesses are starting to rethink how they operate. Remote work is now not only a possibility, but it's become a reality. And I think a lot of businesses are going to start to realize this and keep it around. And with that, there is one company out of Oregon that is doing just that. And they're hiring people right here in the Metro Detroit area, FCR. And with that, let's go ahead and bring in the president of FCR, Matthew Alchuk with us here on the Megacast. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, it's nice to be here. We wanna say thank you for hiring people here in the Metro Detroit area. But before we get to that, give us a background on your company. Okay. Um, so like you said, we're Oregon based and my partner and I started the company about 16 years ago. And it was to sort of rethink outsourcing, just the whole concept around outsourcing. Um, outsourcing in general doesn't have, I would say uh, the best reputation. And what we were trying to say to ourselves back in, uh, I think it was 2005 was, you know, how could we convince companies to instead of sending their work overseas or commoditizing it, could we change that lens, change that perspective, that per perception of how it's uh, taken a look at, and instead, could we maybe get them to explore looking at small towns in the US? And so we started in a little town called Roseburg, and it's in Southern Oregon. And we really just grew from there, and the idea sort of blossomed and it became more about finding a very you know more, more boring work and instead it was focused on let's find tech companies let's find disruptors let's find startups and this was the age of uh, venture capital really exploding private equity a lot of startups um you know like the airbnbs and the drop boxes and the uh, door dashes were starting to take hold the gig economy was really um uh, becoming a thing and we really got lucky and we convinced a couple companies uh, the um, benefits of US-based labor and specifically smaller towns where the work would be appreciated. We put work in there that had more meaning. We built a much more wel welcoming environment. So, you know, it didn't matter about your age or your race or your sexual orientation, uh, the color of your skin. We, all we cared about was just finding good people who were willing to stick around and we just started growing, Ronnie, and it became um, uh, a real interesting growth curve because we didn't expect to be more than maybe 100 people. And to this today, I think we're close to 3,000 people. So we're in Oregon, we're in Montana, we're in Wyoming, Idaho, Tennessee, North Carolina, Poland, Mexico, the Philippines, and of course, Michigan. I'm, I'm looking at all those states that you just listed. I'm like, North Carolina sounds good right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, especially when you're from the Northwest. Oh, yeah. It's just raining. Uh, so with that, what has the thought process been behind your clients, though? Are they more open to you expanding and hiring remote workers than maybe before? Yeah, that's a good question. If you would have told me three years ago that your entire organization was going to be remote, I would have told you you're crazy because we'd already considered that model. and We didn't like it for a few reasons. Specifically, the challenge was how do you maintain a company culture when everybody's in a disparate location? It's very challenging. And um, even to this day, I think many companies are trying to unlock that. But with the pandemic, um, you can either uh, give up or you can soldier on and you can reinvent yourself, which is what we did. And so as soon as we saw it happening, I think we were the first company to basically say, we're going from fully centralized and on-prem locations to a completely decentralized environment where everybody would be working from home. We did it for a number of reasons. I mean, the biggest one, frankly, was the health of our employees. We just, we, we saw our sites continually getting compromised and we just thought that that was not, it was not a uh, sustainable model and so we, went in a two week period, we moved everybody in late 2019, uh, sorry, early 20, I'm trying to get into the- I know, the, the days are all blending together. <laughs> it's groundhog year. Yes. <laughs> Whatever it was, we went as fast as possible. It was about two weeks and um, everybody was 
uh, work from home. And it was a learning process because you were getting into questions like, all right, does their internet speed, is, is it going to work? Do they have enough room to work? Will it be impacted by their families or by their, by their pets? Were their kids gonna be in school? Were they going to be at home? And so it's become a uh, much more sustainable environment. We've learned a ton and now we're exploring many other ways to uh, use this going forward. Even when we exit the pandemic, we will still be in some form a work from home environment. It'll probably be in some sort of a hybridized model where it might be something like half and half, but it will always be a part of FCR. And do you find that right now it's so much more acceptable for people to be working at home? We almost enjoy those interruptions from the kids or the pets barking because it breaks up and makes you more human. It does humanize it when the, the golden retriever walks in the background, right. the toddler kind of comes up behind somebody on the Zoom. It really has leveled the playing field. You know, historically, it's really unfair when you think about the history of work from home because it's been something that has only been accessible by executives um, who are typically paid more who are given the flexibility. Once we sort of opened up that box and we gave everybody a sort of a glimpse into what the potential was, I'll you know, put it this way. We actually asked everyone, I, I asked everyone on my cultural sessions each week, how many of you would like to come back into um, sites versus how many of you would like to stay work from home? And at the highest point, it was 95% wanted to stay work from home. At the lowest point, it was about 85%. Wow. Yeah. So that gives you a, a feel for how people are viewing it. They like it. They, they like not having to commute. They like not having to. I mean, consider this. We didn't have a flu season this year. Every year we have flu season. Every year flu runs rampant through our sites. You have 300 people in a site. It's impossible for it not to happen because people have children, children being home, you know, germs from school or from daycare and they pass it on to their parents who bring it into the sites we were never interrupted by flu season and a lot of people didn't get sick and they really appreciated that i'm so happy that we have you on because i have so many questions and if we could talk about that from your standpoint yeah. as the president what is the cost saving to your company to be able to offer remote learning or remote teaching remote work i'm sorry we talked to so oh, many man. teachers and parents and everything yeah. else <laughs> yeah remote everything um the biggest cost savings i think is is a go go forward uh mentality which when you take the short-term lens we actually are losing money because yeah. we have all of these sites that we have put a substantial amount of money to build all this infrastructure that we've built around an on-premise environment but in a go forward model you can really rethink just the entire concept of what does this model get to look like. Forget about what it used to look like because you don't have to play by that um, game plan anymore. You can really rethink everything. For instance, you can say, what if I build smaller? What if I build more spread out? What if I only bring back 20% in some town? What if I build and integrate inside local colleges or community colleges? What if I build in WeWorks or co-working spaces? What if I completely rethink how I'm letting people come back? Some people are working in benches, some people are working in hangout areas. All of a sudden, it becomes very different. What if you put everybody on laptops so that they can go back and forth? Yeah, it becomes a very different environment. The go forward cost savings could be quite substantial if you build it correctly but you have to manage it correctly as well because you have to make sure people still are motivated to get up, get out of bed, come to work. It's very different. Right, there are two different sides to that. Uh, I remember uh, listening to a TED Talks years ago uh, from, a, he was a president CEO of a manufacturing company and he was talking about this, like getting rid of the building. He's like, I only want you to produce this much. This is how my plan is. I don't care where you do it or if you do it in four hours or eight hours. This is what I want you to produce. And trying to really realign and re-engage the discussion around just that remote work and getting rid of that office building going into the setting and opening up like pods throughout the city and the community for people to be able to work 
wherever they need to work because we do know some people aren't productive at home, especially with so many kids learning at home. Maybe they do need like an office setting like a WeWorks where you just go in and you pop in and that's their sanctuary for the day. But getting rid of these big office buildings. But on the back side, we know that so many companies right now are struggling trying to get employees, but does being able to offer this remote work model, is it helping you to attract quality applicants right now? Yeah, and I, I'll caveat, first I'll say, it breaks my heart that we can't go back to the same model, and yet I'm actually very happy because part of me is glad that I can keep people safer in their home environment. But the whole reason we started the company was to rebuild small towns. And, and the way we did it by was by centralizing our sites into the core of the town. And so when you put 300 to 400 people who are walking around the downtown of a Great Falls or a Butte or a Roseburg or an Independence or a Vanita, all of a sudden you see this sort of really neat golden circle start building where you have more walking traffic, more stores start opening up, more people are spending money. That was always the idea when we built the company. And it, it, we're not gonna go back to that. It'll be a much smaller scale. So part of me is very sad, but a part of me is really fascinated by the future possibilities. If you start rethinking everything around it, and yeah, there, it's been, it's been interesting finding people who can do this work from home. Not everybody can, because you need the space to do it, you need the high-speed internet access to do it, you need the ability to manage your family. It's, it's, it's challenging. As somebody who has two children who are doing remote learning right now, it's not easy. Um, it's a constant struggle every day. But I think most companies, and even most customers of companies, are very open to the challenges around it, because there's suffering those same challenges as well. So every organization right now that sends work to us, they're having those same problems. They can't bring people back. Their people are working from home. Their families are being impacted. Their children are trying to go to school but can't go to school. Um, I would say the, the most interesting aspect about it is it's allowed us to expand faster and further than we ever could have previously because we don't have to build first. We can say to ourselves, you know what? We would like to improve the diversity of FCR. We would like to add more people of color. Let's go to places like Detroit and Romulus and Southfield. Let's go fast. Let's go now. Let's not worry about, um, oh my gosh, you know, do we need to build a building and do we need to do this research? No, let's connect with local business leaders. It's the right thing to do. It's the right time to do it. Let's find communities that fit well within FCR. <laughs> Let's introduce this concept to our existing clients and let's go. And so you can go fast. I mean, we announced uh, North Carolina and then we were into North Carolina within, I think, two months. You can go that fast. Well, just about 20 seconds left here in the show, and we want to say thank you for your time. Uh, Matthew Alchuk with us here. He's the president of FCR. They are hiring right now. Uh, in, in we want to say thank you because I know that you just expanded into Romulus, into your, our area as well. If you want to find out more about the company, the work they're doing, and also hiring, go to gofcr.com. Thank you again so much for your time. I tell them, please go to careers.gofcr.com. We are hiring. We're looking for great people. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time.